I think we'll introduce our, unless you have something. No, go ahead. Our first storyteller, the Yogidian artist. And I have to say her name, Cat Tudor. Thumb off with a post hole. 
So he was working with a couple of cowboys, and one of the cowboys handed him a band-aid, and he finally was able to let him know that he probably ought to get some medical attention since his thumb was completely just hanging by a string. So they put him in the back of a pickup truck and took him down this really bumpy road and took him to Laramie, Wyoming, where this is so lucky. The world expert in thumbs, in sewing thumbs, <laughs> is in Laramie, Wyoming. <laughs> Because ropers, ropers uh -huh. are doing that all the time, just ripping their clothes off. Anyway, my brother had his thumb expertly repaired, but then needed to recuperate. So he moved down for the summer and lived with me. He couldn't shave, you know, he had to put his right hand and tie him up every night. Oh, I would tie him up. But he grew his hair out and he didn't shave. And he started kind of exploring his dirt side. <laughs> so his name was Skeeter, but we'll call him Mystique. <laughs> and he, he, he just started talking about what he'd always really wanted to do was open a little bookstore somewhere. And just, this was in the 70s, so you could still stay, say things like that. <laughs> but, and he just had this dream. He'd really like to, to, to open a bookstore. And so we talked about it all summer. We talked about where this place could be. We picked all these amazing places. And he, he had a pretty good dirt life. But at the end of the summer, he went back and, and back into what he had always been meant to do. He ran a business and became a businessman. And I'm maybe the only one who knows about this dirt side of him. But when he left that summer, he left me with this, this college degree I had in studio art. And no appreciable skills whatsoever, <laughs> except for drawing and making things up. And I, um, looked in the paper and, and I saw an ad for wanted very small, flexible woman who loves to travel. <laughs> oh, that, that just is exactly the description of me. And, and so I thought there is a career out there for me. And I answered the ad and it turned out to be for a traveling circus. <laughs> and they needed, they needed um, small, flexible women to fit inside the box when she got sewed in half by the <laughs> And I walked in and their eyes lit up. <laughs> but I did turn down that job, and that might be my dirt side. Tack. Tack. I finally did, though find an ad to be a copy boy for the Colorado Springs Sun, small paper that was reputed to be liberal here in Colorado Springs huh. back in the 70s. And they needed a copy boy. Well, I had done a stint as a rod boy. That's where you hold a rod for a geologist. And um, college girls, for some reason, were always getting hired as rod boys. <laughs> but I thought, well, Oh, rod boy, copy boy, I'll be the boy. And I got that job. And I was really excited. I, my first day on the job, my boss said, so I hear you're some kind of artist or something. He said, yes, I got really excited. I thought, oh, they're going you know, to have me use my artistic uh, talents. And he said, here, trace this map of Vietnam. <laughs> so I did trace that map of Vietnam. And I got my art on the front page of the paper the next day, but then that was the that was pretty much the highlight of my career. <laughs> I um, I was in charge of ripping these big rolls of paper off of these rollers and discerning who they were supposed to go to, and then taking them to them and putting them on their desk. <laughs> I was just terrible at this, but they had another job for me, which was uh, the weather. And every day, I was supposed to look at the um, weather and match up all these temperatures with all these cities. And I, we didn't have computers then. We had something that you typed on. I didn't know how to type. Well, I tried 
doing this. And it, I was really bad at it, and a couple of times I made some pretty major mistakes, and nobody noticed. Major mistakes. 97 in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> Minus 42 in Honolulu. Nobody noticed. I thought, well, I'm going to just do this. And so I made up the weather every day. It took me almost no time at all. <laughs> I also was in charge of obituaries, and I, I had to call up grieving relatives and confirm, confirm details about the loved one's life. And I did that pretty well. But then one night, one night, I had to find out the details about a man named Charlie that nobody seemed to be able to find out anything about. So the only thing I was able to determine about Charlie is that he had been sent a very nice funeral arrangement from Jinx's Bar. <laughs> now, Jinx's Bar, I had done research before in Jinx's Bar. college students <laughs> had at that point. So I went to Jinx's Bar and said, you know, what can you tell me about this guy, Charlie? He seems to have absolutely no life. And he said, well, Charlie, he was the greatest guy. He came in here every night for 20 years, but he was a deaf mute. And he never said anything, and we just know he's a hell of a nice guy, but he doesn't have any family or anything, and we really don't know anything about him. I thought, okay. Huh. Well, I thought he's probably got this dirt side, and I'll give him a really great life. <laughs> so I wrote, I wrote a beautiful obituary. He had to run away. Join the circus. Um, he had he had lived on a ranch, and of course, he had opened a bookstore. <laughs> he had a pretty good life, and and it was published as I wrote it. It turned out he had a cousin, and she she was not pleased. <laughs> And that just ended my career in journalism. <laughs> so I um, basically, my career, I've always just had to have a career where I can be barefoot. And that's limited me pretty much to yoga and art. <laughs> so that's, that's working out. Now, now that brother, that brother, the one who I watched the Big Thompson flood with and who cut his thumb off and covered with me all summer. Resquite. Batiks? Batiks. He died a few years ago. And when he died, we donated his heart and his lungs and his liver. So I keep thinking that maybe his heart is above this book, this bookstore, this little bookstore in Paramus, New Jersey, or who knows, maybe his kidneys are, are in some way um, having very little success as a bookseller somewhere <laughs> in this country, his liver still living on as his dirt side. So um, I'll just leave you with that, you might all just think of what your last name is backwards. Thank you. <laughs>